Good morning. It's the 23rd. It's a Tuesday. And if you've ever wondered what's the difference between bird flu and swine flu, then you're going to find out right after this. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Tuesday. It's episode two of five for this week of the Steffi Show. Oh, it is so hot. It's already really hot outside. I'm going to have to start bringing fans out of sheds and all sorts of stuff like that. It is really, really hot. So what is the difference between bird flu and swine flu? Well, one requires tweetment and the other requires oinkment. <laughs> it was just so silly when I saw that one. It was so silly. <laughs> okay, YouTube. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, please, and click the jingly jangly bell for different ways to keep in touch with me and hear about really other rubbish jokes as well. And if you're on Facebook, you can like me, you can love me, you can ha 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 me, you can occasionally wow me, sub me or angry me if you like. I don't really care because I'm too hot. <laughs> too hot but that was a really really bad joke just to recap the joke no i'm not going to recap the joke i'll save that for the end but what i will do is push this button here and say what day is it steffi what day is it yes well i know what day it is and you will too shortly it's peanut butter and chocolate day oh now if it had been peanut butter and jelly day i'd have gone eh, eh, eh. i don't like that at all putting jam on peanut butter on the sandwich what's that about no, thank you. But peanut butter and chocolate day, that's a huge difference. Uh, um, there was a big uh, advert campaign by Reese's in the 70s and the 80s and probably 90s and 2000s as well about you got chocolate on my peanut butter and you got peanut butter on my chocolate. And uh, even um, Family Guy got in on the act as well. Hello, I'm Officer Reese's. It's a really funny little scene. But I love peanut butter and chocolate because I discovered it. I discovered the Butterfinger Crisp when I was in America. And it was just amazing. It's, oh, it's just like wafers and chocolate and peanut butter. And it was really zingy. And that became my favorite go-to snack while I was out there. Can't get them in the UK. Well, you probably can, but I can't get them. Um, I can get Butterfinger, which is okay. It's not as nice as Butterfinger Crisp. And then I discovered Kit Kat chunky peanut butter and I was like oh, my life is complete it's as simple as that so it's really nice I don't like putting pe peanut butter on toast I don't I don't like it I don't like it in sandwiches but you combine it with chocolate in a Kit Kat chunky peanut butter Ooh, yes or a Butterfinger crisp if any of my American family can get hold of Butterfinger crisp for me oh and double stuffed mint Oreo mint chocolate covered Oreos Cho it's got to be the chocolate covered ones yes minty chocolate covered oreos and butterfinger crisp peanut butter please send supplies please please send supplies in a big box yes that'd be wonderful yes peanut butter and chocolate day peanut butter and chocolate day it's a divine gustatory opposition it is we'll find out more about that later on blog posts what blog posts have we got today well we got two blog posts for you today so i'm going to go and click over here right here now oh there's my mouse put that button there and i'm going to push this one here and first blog post is from the lovely david pibworth www.davidpibworth.com actor director producer um, he of uh, the owner of the Arches Theatre over in Clifton Rains. It's shaping up to be a fantastic summer season in August. And he's talking about rehearsals. So there's various uh, shows going on and people are rehearsing at the Arches so they can figure out where they can move and where the audience is and stuff like that. There's a picture of David. He's actually uh, doing one of his characters there as well, which is pretty cool. He's, he's really excited and really fired up about it this summer season at the Archers Theatre and so am I because I'm going to go and video some of it yes I will I might video all of it who knows uh, last year was great except I let my left my echo button on this year I will make sure I don't so go and have a look at www.davidpibworth.com and you can read more about the Archers Theatre yes you can yes you can and how to get tickets yes yes right blog post number two because we have two on a Tuesday two for Tuesday it's from the lovely Jonathan Vowles, accountant extraordinaire based in Cranfield, yes, at blog.jvca.co.uk. Yes, where have all the bank managers gone? Well, where have they gone? Who knows? They're just 
streamlined yeah because it's really easy to talk to a call center <clears throat> minimum costs you know minimum uh salaries and stuff like that reading from scripts pushing buttons and getting answers from databases so why wouldn't they do that it makes sense you know but how do you go and talk to your bank manager about raising funding you know for your business and that's a key thing that bank managers used to do in fact the last time i had experience with bank managers was back in 2012 was it 2012 maybe to the back end of 2011 when i was looking for funding as well and i actually managed to nail down a bank manager i did yes but i haven't seen sight and sound of him since and jonathan says that uh bank managers well accountants are the new bank managers because they're the ones who find who can find funding for you so jonathan is offering a funding review for your small business and he'll give you some advice and get you moving down that road if you're interested so blog.jbca.co.uk go and have a chat to jonathan because he's awesome and he's also going to be doing the tip of the week in a minute yes yes business tip on a tuesday time for a top business tip and it is from jonathan it's a short one but it's a good one take it away jonathan hi steffi jonathan from jonathan Al's chartered accountants here great thing for you to business owners out there to think about when you're cutting the grass you've got time quality time to think about what you're doing with your business so how often do you spend quality time just thinking about stuff if you're not doing it start doing it if you need help get in touch oh yeah short but sweet totally right uh, do, do you spend any time working on your business rather than in it? I'm trying to make time to work on my business. I very much am because I've got a plan of what I want to do with it. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a big e-myth aficionado. And so I will do certain things their way and I'll do a thing, other things other ways. I wish I could find a piece of software that allowed me to do a business structure and actually assign job descriptions and link responsibilities and stuff like that. If I could do that on a piece of software and print it out, I'd be really happy with that, but I can't find one. I can't. Hmm. It would be interesting if anybody knows of that organizational software that allows me to put job descriptions and all sorts of other notes attached to the boxes in the old chart and link them to other people. That would be really, really cool. It would. I'd be very happy with that. But like Jonathan said, just then in his business tip, you have to spend time working on your business, thinking about your business. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. So thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. <gasps> fact of the day fact of the day fact of the day i've forgotten what the fact of the day is oh no i haven't there it is because we're talking about gustatory opposition today we've had peanut butter and chocolate we have so that's that's pretty much an opposition as well but here's the next one and this is probably my favorite one in the in the world it's steak and wine wine and steak taste good together because each are at the opposite end of the sensory spectrum so that's gustatory opposition for you uh wine and steak taste good together because they're at the opposite end yes that's why when we have steak in a bottle of wine it's just the most amazeballs meal it really is but chocolate and peanut butter is also amazeballs one other one that i found some years ago and i haven't done it for a while now is a block of dairy milk just plain dairy milk with a barbecue dorito Ooh, that's an interesting opposition it really is that's a really nice sweet and savory one um, and you might be going eh, eh, why would you want to do that well try it don't knock it till you tried it you know peanut butter and chocolate work so why not chocolate and doritos but they have to be barbecue ones because i think i remember right the cheesy ones a bit eh. if you can get the barbecue ones oh yes try that steffi knows steffi knows steffi does know if you're on youtube do click subscribe yay and hit the jingly jangly bell for different ways to keep in touch with me yes and if you're on facebook like me love me ha 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 me you can even wear me if you choose to but no sadness or angry i know it's getting hot outside but hey peace man yeah please yes so what we had today well we had a rather silly joke what's the difference between the bird flu and swine flu one requires treatment the other requires oinkman <laughs> <laughs> I'm still laughing at that one. That's really, really good. And then, and then, and then we had two fantastic blog posts. One from David Pibworth at www.davidpibworth.com. And he's talking about rehearsals at the Arches Theatre. And then blog.jvca.co.uk. Jonathan Vowles 
uh, talking about where are the bank managers gone and how do I raise funding and well you go and see your accountant that's how you do it then Jonathan again with a fantastic top tip work on your business people don't just get sucked in and work in it you need to work on it as well and do some thinking even if it's just thinking about your business that's fantastic and then we had we had chocolate and what no we didn't we had wine and steak Dale steak and wine uh, as, a, as a fact, because it's gustatory opposition, yes, or sensory opposition, opposite of the sensory spectrum, as they called it. I call it gustatory opposition. It works for me. It works well. Peanut butter chocolate, wine and steak, dairy milk and Doritos. Yeah, it works for me. Please feel free to suggest any other oppositions. And on that note, oh yes, on that very important note, don't forget about the organisational software I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to wish you a happy day. Have an awesome day, kids. I'll stop waffling. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>